Hello, Legionnaires, and welcome to some Rando RPG livestream. Tonight, our panel of Dungeon Masters, Game Masters, Referees, Storytellers, and Players will share their diverse tabletop role-playing game experiences to provide ideas, suggestions, and possibly even some advice for your tabletop RPG sessions. Let's get started. Welcome to some Rando RPG livestream. I am John Max Leoslo, your host. I'm truly grateful that you are with us for tonight's livestream discussion on battle maps and miniatures, I suppose, versus theater of the mind. And I sincerely hope you enjoy the conversation. So what do we do here in some Rando RPG livestream? Well, in segments one through four, we discuss topics surrounding the tabletop role playing game hobby with an emphasis on individual experiences, desires and expectation. In tonight's four segments on battle maps versus theater of the mind, we hope to provide ideas suggestions and food for thought for your tabletop rpg sessions and if you hang out with us for segment five we let down our hair and just talk about nerd issues of interest if we meet the giveaway threshold we'll talk about that later segment five is when we will determine the winner now please consider supporting legion of myth through the links in the live streams description youtube takes 30 percent twitch takes 50 percent of your hard-earned money while rumble paypal streamlabs and ko-fi take between zero and five percent I do see the direct PayPal and the occasional Ko-Fi donation. I don't mention them because some folks prefer to be silent supporters. And, you know, I, I respect that. But, no, I see them, and I am extremely grateful for everyone's support. Rumble rants and super chats, less than $20. I will read at the end of each segment. $20 or more, I will interrupt the segment to read your rant or chat as immediately as I can. And $50 or more... I will take a drink in your name and you can force the panel to answer any tabletop RPG related question of your choice right then and there. If we make $100 or more in Super Chats or Rumble Rants, there will be a $25, nay, a $50 Palladium Books or drive through RPG gift card giveaway during segment five towards the end of the live stream. Legion of Myth YouTube members, as well as tonight's Super Chatters and Rumble Ranters, have the opportunity to win, but you must be watching at the time of the giveaway to claim your victory, else it rolls over to next week. Uh, talking about that, here have Max's Crap giveaways going on. Uh, it's kind of buried in links now, but you can go check out the YouTube community post or, the, uh, or on our Discord under the contest channel. The giveaway will be on Monday when I do the 24-hour uh, live stream uh, in support of the Wounded Warrior Project. Here, I'll even put that up because that is the charity we support. So on Monday, I'm going to be streaming for 24 hours. Technically, it won't be quite 24 hours. Heathen Dog is going to give me a spell to run his Paranoia 2nd Edition game. He did get the players for that, so that's awesome. He's going to be running Paranoia 2nd Edition with some folks that includes Sean Owen Robertson from uh, Palladium Books. Other than that, I will be streaming from midnight to midnight central time in support of the Wounded Warrior Project. Hopefully, you guys will join us and help support that awesome cause. Don't forget that Legion of Myth moderators will time out or even ban people who attack any panel, panelist or chatter. Attack the argument, not the person, and keep your various social media beefs off my show. Please like this video. Subscribe to all the panelists' channel, well, except for Connell, because he doesn't want you subscribing, apparently, to anything that he's got. So just ignore Connell tonight. That's going to be our theme. Okay. For <laughs> but please like this video, subscribe to all the panelists' channels found in the description of this live stream or video if you're watching later. And thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. All right. With all that nonsense out of the way, let's uh, let's meet our panel. And yes, we will start with the aforementioned Connell. Who are you? What contents or products do you create? And what is your tabletop RPG experience? Uh, my name is Connell, the Scar DM. I've been a YouTube slight personality for a better part of three to four years. I could have been found, I was found on Gatekeepers there for a while and uh, Table Breakers, which Table Breakers will be coming back here in a couple weeks. Cool. Uh, so that's fun. Um, I am a professional DM. I run at local. Whoa, games where are we? We got a pro among us today. <laughs> hey, it keeps the lights on. Or beer in my hand, one of the two. And I'm here to share my opinion on the topic. That's what I got going on. Awesome. Below him, once again, back with us today is Bear. Who are you? What content or products do you create? And what is your tabletop RPG experience? I am Bear, the Gen X GM. I am the arch nemesis of Connell, the Cigar DM. And I'm here <laughs> merely to say no, he's wrong to every argument he makes tonight and see if I can make him cry. Oh, we don't want Connell to cry. Oh, yes, we do. 
I want to see Mr. Max Boyvan cry. So, Mr. Max Boyvan, tell us why you cry. I mean, who are you? What contents or products do you create? And what is your tabletop RPG experience? I'm Mr. Max Boyvan. My channel is Reaction Principal Gaming. I uh, try to figure out stuff to promote roleplay more in the lobby, I guess. And uh, it takes a lot to make me cry. Well, That's now it. challenge accepted. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, tonight we are talking about Battle Maps and Miniatures versus Theater of the Mind. And for this first segment, this first video, if you're watching this after the fact, we're going to be focusing on, an immer on immersion and engagement. I debated having a question out there that defined immersion, but I don't think we really need to do that because... Truthfully, I know some people don't like this, but immersion is a little different for each person. Instead of getting really pedantic like we did last time about a, a definition, we'll just go with it as we uh, as we move on here. So we will start with our virgin panelist, Connell. How do you use battle maps and miniatures to enhance player immersion and engagement? I give the players a... Um a miniature or something to concentrate on at the table. So they don't have a minor ADD moment wondering what we're doing next. I will use um, miniatures and maps and other things to make a room, a dungeon, whatever, where it draws a person's uh, attention. I want them attention to be on, on me. I try to use only maps without any grits where you actually have to be one of those guys that pulls out tape measure and actually, okay, this is how far away, uh, how far things are away from you. There is no one, two, three, five sh uh, shot. You have to actually measure it out, sort of like game uh, war uh, Warhammer, mm -hmm. but still in the RPG fantasy theme. So, and, and this, this is me to a T. How do you handle situations where actually having those visual representations limit the player's imagination? I don't, I haven't really came across where it limited because when I'm deeming for adults, adults are adults. I mean, most anymore people are on their phone, even if you're doing a, a theater of the mind. But with kids, it's always the oohs and the ahs, and they're really into it. It's something that they could touch, feel, and see that drags them. Uh, hook, line, sinker into the role that you are trying to create for them. You had a very different childhood than me. <laughs> I also have a severe case of ADD, so anything that's going to attach me to what I was supposed to be doing was a godsend. It's, uh, growing up, and it didn't matter if it was school or home, it was close your eyes, now imagine this. And that's why when I got into role-playing, it was very simple. But Okay, well, well, we'll see if we might be able to tackle some of that... Uh, a little bit more. So, Kat, how do you use battle maps and miniatures to enhance player immersion and engagement? Uh, well, I, to be honest, I don't really use them anymore. Um, when I did... Uh, Excuse me, sir. I said I was talking to the cat. It's about uh, knocking him off the right, table. Right, right. Meow, 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 <laughs> meow, 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 meow. Furthermore, Carthage must be destroyed. Um, <laughs> no, I, okay, down, beans. I love you, but down. Thank you. Um, I don't use them anymore. Uh, when I did use them, they were merely for placekeeping, so people knew where things were. Uh, I, I will say this. The tactical-minded players came through um, to a certain extent, and they would use it to position themselves for the best example, including one where the wizard literally just, as the fight's going on and everybody's beating up on the line of villains and they're trying to hold the line, he just every turn went, do 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 lightning bolt right through the line the front line of the uh, the villains so i see the benefit of it i don't prefer it uh but it can have a benefit for allowing people to have a very clear and concise understanding of where they are in the scene what yeah. what challenges have you faced in keeping players engaged when using detailed battle maps and how did you address them well the problem is, is that it's what you just said Ooh, shiny all right, it's what sorry, it's what Connell just said. Uh, kids, the kid brain turns over. It's action figures on a playset now, and it can really be a hindrance to role playing. So I try and force the role playing back into the scenario. 
uh, by actually having the NPCs role play and interact with them and things like that, as opposed to just, you know, all right, there it is. You can see the room. Good luck. I actually try and describe the room a little bit and keep them focused because that's one of the big dangers for me is that when you have a visual representation there, description falls off and people's imaginations go fallow. Okay. All right. Well, we will move on to Mr. Max Buevan then, because I know you are the battle map master. You have them hanging on your wall. A table, I don't, you you walk, you live your life in squares and hexes and battle maps, even just to go get the mail. So how do you use battle maps and miniatures to enhance player immersion and engagement? Obviously, like, you know, we're, those are role-playing games. So there's games. And games need game pieces, right? You need the plastic. You need the bits. You need, like, you know, it's like your pawn, right? Like, if you're not, like, people want to eschew that. And then, like, well, what you're doing is something else. You're not playing a game anymore. You're just doing, like, improv theater, and right? And then you're not playing the role-playing game anymore. It's a game, guys. So you need the game pieces. And they're great because if your player, like, zoned out during combat, during the round, when it's not their turn, right? You don't have, like, they, now they can just take a few minutes to look at the battle map. When their turns come again, and then they know what happened, you can do a little bit of summary. Oh, wait, wasn't that guy there? Oh, he's not there anymore. You can say, oh, yeah, you got killed by this guy. But, you know, they already get, like, kind of the picture of what's happening, what happened in the, in the battle. Why do I feel like I'm being trolled? Oh, we, we're being very much trolled right now. <laughs> okay, to get back on track, uh, let us let me ask the question again. That was good. Uh, how, in, in reality now, how do you use battle maps and miniatures to enhance player immersion and engagement? To be honest, I don't because like I feel like I over the time I felt that they do take away more than they are. Like for me, like it, like because you you I want and I guess we're gonna talk more about that in theater of the mind. Like I'm the theater of the mind kind of guy, right? Mm -hmm. People like figure that out, right? Uh, the thing I can say, right? Just like maybe you can motivate some players to come back to your table if you put the nice diorama and stuff like that, like you got the wow factor. For some people, I guess I don't, it's going to be eff effective. You know, you have to know your, your crowd. But for me, like I always felt like it takes me, like I'm not in the mindset of my character anymore. I'm not in the, I'm not in the seeing the world to the eyes of my character. Now I'm seeing from up, up eye, third person from ab above, right? So just something to consider. If you want to play that. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, stuff. where you trolled... <laughs> <laughs> was actually how I, I kind of see in terms like I think some people emphasize the game portion of it too much and forget the role playing side of it. But, you know, that's what some people want, to be fair. Um, yep. Do you think that there is a scenario or what scenarios can benefit from an actual detailed visual, whether 3D or battle map miniatures, whatever representation of the area? If you want to do like the tactical combat, Right and be very detailed and stuff like that. I'm not opposed to that. Right, it's like I just think that they're not like in the same vein as much as the role playing game. To in in the way I see role playing game. Right, I like war game. I like board game and stuff like that. And I like the tactical combat as well. You know, I can I can play a game like a Ranger of Shadow Deep and stuff like that, which is like a role playing adjacent adjacent. And you know, it's not that it's wrong in itself. It's just when I'm at the table for a role playing game. I'm looking for a different vibe, but some people can mix it, and that's fine, right? Um, I generally agree with uh, well, my take, since we this went really quick, and I know there's going to be some back and forth here in a moment, hopefully, but uh, is that I, I think this might blow Connell's mind, but I literally, miniatures take me out. Because I'm trying to envision the action. Imagine you're watching the movie and you got Legolas hopping from beast to beast trying to shoot stuff like this. And then what I see on the table is some random metal thing just going. I can't picture that thing necessarily in action the way I can imagine just the character hopping and 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 jumping and flipping and, and doing whatever he's doing. You know? So the miniatures actually take me out of the game. It makes the immersion for me harder. Oh, you can comment to that. Oh, any of us can comment to that or just comment? Yeah, absolutely. 
Just I kind of directed at Connell, but anybody absolutely can come. I can't trust anything Mr. Max says tonight because, you know, the lost Gallagher brother is confusing me right now. And all I've got <laughs> is Wonder Wall and Champagne Supernova running through my head. <laughs> Bear was singing that before the stream. He wouldn't stop. Come on. <laughs> he looks like he's either uh, Danny Elfman's son or a lost Gallagher. It's crazy. Grow the mustache back. I, I prefer John Holmes <laughs> much better. I, I'm uh, seeing David Spade from Tommy Boy. No. Okay, okay, let's get back on track yeah, back for a moment. We can do all that in segment five. Back on the topic, you just calm down, sir. You get a beans. Um, I agree with you. Uh, it takes you out of the game. It does. Yeah, I farted around with the VTTs. I'm not sure if we're going to touch on that later. I forget the questions, but I farted around with VTTs for a while, and I just discovered I freaking hate them because they take so long to set up. It slows everything down. Everybody's always looking around. What do I click? What do I do? Just play the goddamn game, please. If you can't, if what can't would you say to people? Say that is the game. I mean, the game that's part of the game is clicking. How, that's how they like to play the game. They're allowed to. No one says that there's any way. There's no wrong, right. It's just how you prefer. And if you prefer that, that's awesome. But if I'm a storyteller and I cannot a set the scene, b describe what's going on clearly, or c when you ask me to re-describe so you have a better grasp, do that. I have no business being a storyteller. I have no business being a GM. I have no business being a DM. And then you might as well just go join Watsi's AI DM Express and see how that all works out for you. Okay, do you mind? Do you and mind? Uh, when you say like people, some people prefer playing like that and stuff like that, like we talk sometimes about like, you know, the, the right table for the right players, right? You need mm -hmm. to find the people that want to play the game like you. And this is absolutely something that should be discussed. Like the expectation should be talked about when you start a new campaign with a new group or stuff like that right a new group i guess uh you know are we gonna are you, are you running combat with miniature or are you just doing theory of the mind stuff like that are you doing a mix of both are you like depending on the situation right expectations should be met on that because like for some people they're not interested just doing the theater of the mind some people they're not interested in the miniature right and that's all fair just set your expectation I agree with uh, Mr. Max. I think it's just what the table needs, or not so much the table needs, what the table wants. I sit down at Bruce's table uh, in person years ago, and that guy has more miniatures than half the shops I know. And he paints miniatures. If you ever watch his show, he continuously paints one miniature after the next because he's like me. He enjoys having a physical representative at the table. You're, at a ta you're playing at a table with kids, and they're about ready to fight a dragon. Well, everybody knows what a dragon looks like. Well, are we talking Asian one, a European one? Are we talking uh, dog face? Well, no, no. You drop a miniature of a dragon on the table. And sometimes you get oohs and ahs. Sometimes you don't. But with the right table, you do get the oohs and the ahs. Especially if it's the uh, early, no, mid, no, late 90s uh, colossal red dragon. You just slam that on the table which dwarfs everything else because it's the same size as your damn house cat. And you're going to get people's attention. Yeah. But at the same time, way to immerse your imagination, way to flex those, those narrative skills, you know, as opposed to, you know, the shadow falls across you as you enter the room, the heat has gone up. You can feel it coming off of you. Everything is taken on a red tinge in the reflected light. You see the first paw land, the talon as big as a pony. Like instead of having all of that, as they're sitting at the table, listening to you, getting drawn in more and more and more, just bloom, hunk of thing. Ooh, hunk <laughs> wow. Of thing. wow. <laughs> also, if you want, like, if, if you want, like, have so I'm going to put the dragon for the representative of the dragon, then you're limited in the creature you can use to the miniature you have, or you're going to have to use proxies, and then, like, then you kind of ruin the effect, right? Just like, oh, no, no, don't think about yeah. this. A, that's not a, a dragon. That's actually like a purple worm, because I don't know a purple worm thing. No, a purple worm. Like, so here's a straw that I bent. There you go. <laughs> there is enough miniatures out there and online or in your local game store that you can actually find what you're looking for. I mean, so, so Con Connell, there, there's, here's the thing. I hear this from miniatures folks all the time, and this is the thing that's going to get me yelled at by the RPG community, and I don't care. The only people who want to play with miniatures are the people who wasted all their money on miniatures and have to validate that amount of money that they spent on miniatures. You know, I, I, I have to bring up an argument that I can argue against. 
Um, Go no, ahead. I, <laughs> I don't have I spend <laughs> a lot of money on miniatures. No, you're not wrong. You're absolutely right. <laughs> and but, I got to and, come on something. Like I have, I do own a lot of miniature because I like painting miniature. I just don't like using them in the game. <laughs> It's just a different hobby for me, right? I just I like that. It's sitting there, painting miniature. I, I know I have a lot of board game miniature as well. I can paint those as well, right? Just but in okay. a role playing game, just like they distract more than they add to me. I'll, uh, we'll we'll move on to the next question in just a moment. Just for the record, for folks out there, because we're kind of beating up on Connell right now. I'm actually in the middle. I think Bear said earlier that he's in the middle. I Man. actually like using abstract maps and abstract representation just so people get an idea of distances ranges i don't mean square by square hex by hex i mean just like there's the hill there's the river you guys are in this side of it that you know something like that i do a lot of whiteboarding for my games so i will utilize these miniatures or, or battle maps to a lesser degree but when it comes to the actual description of what's going on around you and using the imagination i'm definitely on on the side of, of bear mr max but i do understand that there can be a place for it do you guys want to any anything uh lastly you guys want to talk about that first question or we can move on to the next one ready to move on okay well let me <laughs> uh, if you think you have some presence and charisma, the ability to entertain, educate, and a good AV setup, free from noise pollution, and an inter apparently and free from cats. I've got one. Bears got one. Cats disrupt everything. Uh, well, Mr. Max has knocked his microphone off before the stream started, or knocked him off the uh, the stream. Yep. Yeah. So no cats either. We got. We're that's going to be a new rule. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, oh, beans disagrees. I know. And an interest in discussing tabletop RPGs in this format, join the Some Rando RPG live stream Discord. The link is in the description to stay tuned for future topics. I've actually posted the topics all the way out through February now. Help us get to know you, and maybe we'll get you on the show to talk about your experiences. Now, I don't have any super chats. Actually, I do have a super chat. I have two chats starred. We will start with the not super chat. Table Runner Christian, steer this piece of plastic for me, please. <laughs> like, just, I don't know. There's something about the tone of that that uh, that comment made me laugh. So, I'm immersed in my plastic. Uh, and then, uh, excuse me, I have actual lead miniatures, sir. Not pewter, lead. Oh yeah. Somewhere I do, yeah. Um, Jim Cody for ten dollars. What's that? They taste sweeter. <laughs> don't eat your lead miniatures, people. That's you might turn out like Mr. Boivin. <laughs> So, uh, GM Thanks Cody so for ten dollars. Thank you for the ten dollars, GM Cody. He says, "I love miniatures, but I prefer theater the mind all day for RPGs. For certain situations, they can be cool, and they do not distract me per se. But for most, uh, I think he meant I find they do." Okay. So, thank you very much for the ten dollars and appreciate the comment. Con poor Connolly, he comes back for the first time in over a year. <laughs> He's just gonna get beat up today, but we're good. We're all friends here. Do you whiz? I just got no respect around here, man. <laughs> All right, we are going to start with a bear for question number two. How do you create an immersive experience using theater of the mind? Description, description, description. Ancient Chinese secret. Hey, it's like okay. One of the guys who I play with on a regular loves maps, loves VTT, because when I walk into a room, I can see the room, I know how big it is, and it's like, yeah, but when I walk into a room, I don't instantaneously see the entire room. I have to take time to look around that room. I have to go look behind things. i got to go investigate the room. So by using descriptions, by using – very – do you mind? Really? Okay. <laughs> Um, by using descriptions and, you know, use your words, Billy, you can actually create the scene and you can build it in their minds. And then they're going to imagine it in their filter and in their way of dealing with it rather than, hey, here's battle map number 72, dark dungeon. There we go. And let's just play from there, guys. I agree with something Mr. Max said earlier, which is the top bird's eye view is bad. And I agree. Hence why I try and describe what you're seeing in your line of sight instead. How would you help somebody or no, no. What advice would you give to somebody who's like, I am just not good at that. I'm not a good writer. I'm not a good describer. I'm, 
you know, I hear what you're saying and it sounds right. It sounds interesting, but that just sounds like extra work that I'm not good at. So I think I'm just going to deal with the battle maps. Well, my first answer is you do you because that's what I believe. My second answer is, Hey, there's this thing called chat GPT. It can write some amazing room descriptions for you. Use it. It's a tool. Would you would you also say that practice, practice, practice? Yeah, so if you want to get to Carnegie Hall. Uh, yeah, you can absolutely <laughs> use, uh, you can use, you get better as you go, right? But you got to yeah. start somewhere. So if you're having a hard time and you don't feel like you're very, first of all, why the hell are you GMing if you're not a descriptive, narrative, engaging person? Like, that just seems weird to me. Because nobody that's else will like, do it? Yeah, exactly. It's like Stockholm Syndrome DM, right? Like, uh, someone had to do it. Um, but practice get better but use the tools available to you go read run prepackaged and modules they have tons of room descriptions in them and stuff like and that. improve upon them every time <laughs> all right mr max Boivon. you're the me. 4d guy you're the guy that insists on all this weird wacky role playing yeah. How do you create an immersive, no trolling this time, sir. <laughs> How do you create an immersive experience using theater of the mind? For, uh, like, like Bear like, mentioned it a bit, like, you know, those games are about visualization. Or oh, was it Bear mentioning it? Or is it in chat? Those games are about visualization, right? You're supposed to, I want you to create a picture in your mind, right? And we have this thing that we do where we allow some freedom to the player to co-create in the sense that something that is that makes sense to be there, right? If you're in a bedroom, right, you're free. Like, I I'm going to tell you, you're in a bed, like, it's a modern setting. It's a bedroom of a poor apartment, right? I don't, I'm not somebody that likes to over describe too much. I kind of get a different approach from bear that because, like, then you can, you, you're free to add the things that would make sense to be there in that setting, in that context, right? So you free, you're free to create the picture in your mind that makes sense. And we have this thing we recall about increasing resolution as the scene goes about, right? It's like if you read a book. Think about it when you read a book. A character gets into a scene, and the author doesn't spend like two pages describing the old fucking the old the old. Sorry for the swearing. I'm trying the old the old <laughs> like uh, the old place, right? But as the character interact with the place, as the character interact with the environment, the resolution of the place increase and the picture that you depict it's the same thing you can do the same thing in role-playing game right like as the it's a, it, like you know you don't i don't have to tell you there's a bed i don't have to tell you the color of the sheet because it doesn't really matter well what if i want to make sure that it's not a heart-shaped canopy bed if it is if it is something that is specific then you specify it but if something that is mundane and like something to be expected like it's something normal you don't have to describe the normal and the mundane right if you're in the library or in the office, there might be a bookshelf with some books in it. You don't have to describe everything, right? So if the player says, oh, I'm, I'm going to the bookshelf and draw a book, yeah, that's fine. There's one, right? doesn't matter. If it's important, okay. if something is, is out of the ordinary, then you can describe that. But for the rest of the thing, you said it's an office. And we know the setting. And we know the context. And you know, so you know, I can fill it, the blank in my mind, right? And interact with it. And as the other player interact with the, with the scene, and they add stuff to the they add, they they add resolution to the scene. Then I adjust the picture in my mind, and we all agree on that. And then, like at some point, we get something pretty well defined. So, how do you handle misunderstandings or varying player interpretations? You like you, if if it didn't came like to be like uh, important the scene, like if it's important the scene, like usually misunderstandings are pretty rare because like oh something like oh now like the. Something interacted and it changed the scene in some way, right? People will notice that. But if this stuff mundane, right? Oh, the chair, like, oh, I sit on the chair that's next to the door. And then, like, somebody, like, think that the chair is across the room, right? It doesn't really matter. Like, you have, like, misunderstanding in real life all the time, right? I said, oh, I thought, no, wait. Oh, no, sorry. I thought the light switch was on the other side. I'm sorry. Right? That happened in real life as well. So it, maybe that's just what happened in the game. You just adapt and you just, like, those little details, don't sweat them. Like, it, for me, it's more important to keep the flow of the game going than to have every little detail like in place and like well defined and stuff like that you know if it's not important it's not important it's about the characters it's about the action 
it's not about like where the light switch is or what what type of light, light switch it is, right? Is it a dimmer or is it a, a toggle, right? It's like who cares? Okay. Maybe you, maybe, you, maybe, 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 you, maybe you thought it was a toggle, and then somebody oh just go to dim the light. Well, then it's a dimmer. You just didn't know this before, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna start some chat here. That's gonna get. <laughs> it's gonna be some fun to address later. Um, Connell. I know theater of the mind isn't your thing necessarily, but you know we got to talk both sides of the fence here. How do you create an immersive experience using theater of the mind? Um, let's say I'm at a shop, uh, and I get everybody, and I get a full table of eight people. I got eight people at my table, and at the beginning, I will explain you guys are outside of a small town. Laying it out, you know, rolling hills, dot, dot, dot. Uh, when they get in town, I'll hit my uh, phone because I have a couple different soundtracks kind of lined up where you hear the hustling and bustling of a tavern, old school tavern. You got music, a little bit of music in the background or talking, the the clattering of plates and stuff like that. You know, stuff uh, that will drive you up, up, up. The damn wall, Max. You know. Yeah, I, I, I've learned that playing audio at a role playing game is bad. Well, it it works. It doesn't work for everybody, but it does. It sets the mood. You know, it set. Or I'll have the lights down low if there's an important part where they are meeting somebody that's in the back room. I will say like a, I can get with like a theater type aspect. You're going to the theater, and they have all these different production aspects to it. I will do that in my campaigns for whoever I'm running for to actually make them feel like they're there and actually that person. Um, if there's a storm, I'll have, you know, stormy weather outside. If they're next to a fire, I'll have uh, a campfire noise on. Something there that they can hear that will kind of put them in the mood. There's so many, there's, what is it? Sight, smell, hearing, and feeling are how you... Uh, uh perceive the area you're in there's only so much i can do in a game shop so i'm going to try to hit as many of those as i can i if i want something to stink i'll have one of the players take their shoes off but nobody wants that um but that's Weird. how i <laughs> okay yeah, something smells like a troll put your shoes back on there tom um can you discuss a time when you were kind of forced to use theater of the mind because miniatures and battle maps at that time either weren't available or didn't uh, wouldn't cover what you were trying to express? Yeah, I, I, I can. Um, I, I, up until recently, I was running this module. I finally got my players through uh, Rise of the Rune Lord, which is absolutely horrible because they don't give you hooks that will drag the player on from the next thing, or they won't describe something per, uh, the way it should be. And roll 20, uh, the internet site, well, roll 20 only gives you so much. So I had to say, well, you guys in a cathedral uh, with X amount, uh, X amount of windows, pews, uh, you see this old man. And I just drew out the scene more than what the book says to keep them interesting, to keep them going the right direction I need them to do. I can do theater of mine. It works better, in my opinion, it works better with adults than it does with children. Yeah, I can uh, see that. Man, try to get a kid I, off of, Barry, get, uh, try to get a kid off of oh, this. Oh, no, 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 no. I haven't interacted with the children in 20 years, thankfully, so I, I don't know, but, you know. Well, I, well I, can, I can understand that, though, because kids do like to focus on the tangible and the shiny, as was mentioned earlier, so I get that. They're little and cross goblins. I'm just exist. making sure they're not doing ranch hack over my game. Okay. All right. Um, so the floor is open for you guys to talk back and forth here. Um, I think Connell makes some valid points. I think Mr. Max makes some valid points. Um, I think I made some valid points. I think overall it's going to boil down to the style of game you're running. I think Theater of the Mind is a very powerful thing if you can immerse the people into the theater of the mind. If they're the whole time, well, might as well play checkers, baby, because, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, a, that's a losing battle right there. Uh, but, you know, I prefer theater of the mind ultimately because it's fucking easier. Pardon my French, but man, 
I got tired of hunting down tokens and trying to find the right maps and then having to go to Kinko's to print up the map and all this garbage and then buying a metric crap ton of Pathfinder pawns and then trying to find the right pawn for the right thing. Like it, it was exhausting and it wasn't making the game more fun. It wasn't increasing the enjoyment of the game for us, and Theater of the Mind always does, because everybody listens while you're narrating and describes. Okay. And when you have one of those players, and I have them, even today, who like to go, blah, 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 do you mind if I finish setting the scene, Steve? You know, like, you just do it. You got to some... I think Theater of the Mind forces you to be more in control of the game. Because you have to maintain the attention and you have to police the behavior a little bit more. Where once the miniatures are on the table, they don't have to interact with you until it's their turn. Yeah. And then they just start moving stuff around. You know I was about right? to say, like, for, for me, like, it or the mind, like, it forced the player to listen because they don't have like, this. And what I was saying was in my troll earlier, right? They can, like, oh, when people just like thumb through the books or look on their phone, right? Just like then they can just look at the battle map and see what happened. If you take away the battle map, they have to listen, they have to pay attention. And the misunderstanding thing as well, like something I can add to that, like if you're in combat and stuff like that, maybe I should save that for later. Yeah, no, no, the next segment is going to be combat and strategy. Yeah, Although there later. are there are a couple of comments we're going to look at that that talk about that, so we'll touch on some of it now. Go ahead, Connell. It can kind of do it for both. Now, I haven't done so many games where it's been all theater of the mind, but having handouts. Yeah, it's great if your players are having to pay attention. You know, I don't disagree with that, whatever. But uh, there's a letter or a map or whatever handout that the module or you come up with going to Kinko's or wherever and printing out a few copies of this, at least two, one for you and one for the players to pass around, I don't think is a bad idea. Having a physical copy of, let's play, uh, let's say you're playing Kingmaker, the Pathfinder or whatever uh, that the players can hold on to or re real re-read when there's a riddle on a note somewhere other than oh wait how did that riddle go and so they're counting on you as a dm to go again holding their hand when they have a physical aspect they can look back on yes but now you're asking players to do the one thing that they all hate to do for some reason in the modern age which is read i i will i will never understand how we went from being a game that was mostly a hobby mostly played by people who love to read to people who now complain if there's more than a paragraph to read yep it, it's insane to me also something you said earlier mr max about when you're reading a book no one describes the entire room or the entire thing before it. clearly you don't read tolkien because i <laughs> would like to spend five pages describing the mountain to you first <laughs> yeah, yeah, much, yeah fucking, that, that's to be fair, that's a big problem I have with Tolkien. I'm much more like yeah. an award guy than a Tolkien guy because of that. Uh, it is what it is. But it, but even then, like, he's not gonna give you like the whole picture, right? It's, he, he goes on long time about like description. I guess I'm not like. Is that a... Yeah, if you go on too long in a game, then even I'm gonna stop listening to you and be like, "Wait, did you say that there was something over there? <laughs> what, did you say that there's a bed in this room, Mister Max? Because I forgot already. Because you're describing the paneling and how many grain it is and how many nails they put in. <laughs> you know? That's a point. I, I, I in the great game. detail. What happens when you carve your eye out, Cody? Please. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I will. But, uh, if I have to listen to one more tree sing, I will set a forest fire. I will be the anti-smoky. <laughs> anti-smoky. Is that, a, right. is that like a new like a uh, new new dichotomy we should do like the Tolkien GM versus the Award GM? <laughs> that would be an amazing topic. It would, it wouldn't <laughs> last long, but good topic. We're gonna we're gonna end this segment here as we got the introduction done. And we're, our next segment is going to be on combat and strategy. Uh, Look at uh, some of the. We don't have any super chats this time, but I did miss uh, Crafty's not super chat membership chat. That's just not the same thing, sir. <laughs> he says, uh, "Looks like I got to listen to you, asshole." See, you got me cursing now. Everybody's curse is for Connell. Don't, don't, don't. Oh, don't give him a minute. <laughs> yeah, uh, looks like I get to listen to you assholes on my commute home. Well, there you go. And thank you for being a member for forty six months. Two more, and you might have a new icon or not. I can't remember. If I, I think I made one, but I'm not sure. Thank you. Um, two months to make one. So, um, I don't want to spend too much time on these one because they're not super chats, but two, we're also going to be getting into this. But just to show folks out there that we know that there are people with differing opinions and so forth, where I, I, 
I selected a couple of chats here that we can look at. Um, just get some minis and play a real game. Well, like Warhammer 40K, uh, Axis yep. and Allies, uh, Battle of the Bulge, uh, The Taking Plans of Vimy War. Ridge, uh, um, Warhammer Fantasy, Skirmish. What, like, what, what real game are you referring to, sir? Chess. Chess, Hero, yeah. Hero Quest. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, absolutely. I'm not going to yeah, comment on this one because my comment for this one will actually be in the last one. Uh, do you, you want to say something, Connell? Okay. I was being nice tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Per, uh, what I don't allow is players adding or subtracting from any scene I've set. This is going to be somewhat directed at Mr. Max Boivon, but I've got, before Mr. Max Boivon answers, I, I got a little caveat. Player, well, I take the ladder and I, me, I mentioned no such ladder. Now try again with what you do have. So this is where Mr. Max Boivant and that the 4D crowd differ from me. Mr. Max generally says, and I know you got you got uh, a, a direct answer to this, but generally says as long as it's not hindering either, you know, causing problems. That sure, there's a ladder there. Didn't think that there was going to be, but there's a ladder there. Just go on with it. Where I do it as the player is, I say I look around for a ladder, and if there is one, that way that gives the game master the authority to make the decision because it is still his game. I don't believe that it's the player's game. I believe it's a game master. Game. But hey, you know what? Maybe the game master. Like, there could be a ladder here. Like Kevin says, roll, take a D20, roll a, li- a high low or D6, whatever, roll high low. You're not sure there's supposed to be a ladder there? Well, crap. Roll. One, sorry, there's no ladder. Six, okay, there is a ladder. So there are different ways to handle that. But uh, go ahead, yeah. Mr. Max Wavon, because I know you've got some thoughts on that. We have a rules that you cannot like just add something that would give you a direct advantage, right? Like to something that's too big, like you and there's a decorum, right? If you're like in the bedroom, yeah, there's not gonna be a ladder, maybe a step ladder in the in the in the cupboard, stuff like that, right? Well, it'd be weird to have one. And we you can like it's still encourage if it's something you feel is a bit big, right? There's a there's a question of vibe there. You can say, Well, I'm, I look around for a ladder or something I can climb on, right? That's fine. And then the GM say, Yeah, there is like or but if you're in the in the garage, right? In the modern garage, it's not it's pretty likely that there's gonna be a, a ladder there, right? It's like every fucking like middle middle class garage gonna have like a ladder in it. So not unless the neighbor still, borrowed it. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, that's Steve, why you can roll the back sometimes, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> and also 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 when the when the player adds something to the world. The GM is always we what we, we say like you you can always say like the the GM kind of like if if the if the player went too far the GM can stop it but we encourage to say like if you say I'm just go I grow grab the ladder on the on the rack and say you yeah, I realize it's pretty rusty right and not safe to use anymore right you can always like caveat thing to put a stop if you feel the player went too far right so that that's something that. And okay. it's something I like to do, right? It's something that's fun to do. It's forced you. It's forced you to think on your feet. So uh, we're right. in the killer's bedroom. I'm gonna go grab the sex swing out of the closet. <laughs> that's not normal. Well, it's normal at my house. Like I mean, you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, play with people that have I, an I, idea. I've got the bondage is. ball in my mouth already. Yeah. What's going on here? I, I find the gimp mask in the closet. You know, like come on. Yeah. yeah. No, okay, I mean, that that you know, that went weird uh, <laughs> quickly, and then and look, Con, unless you have something, Connell, I've got, I'm going to move on to the last chat. Uh, go for it. Okay, this one is the one I'm going to comment on, but I'll let these guys go first. Um, words can never fully transmit spatial awareness, understanding the way direct visuals, maps, videos in person can. It's in part why, for example, no one buys a house based on verbal written description. Go ahead, Bear. I, yeah. I, I was yeah. expecting Bear to tackle this, but it's up to you. It's up to you. I, okay, all right. Look, medium is the message, okay? Yes, if I'm buying a house, I need to see pictures or go visit it myself. If I'm exploring a dungeon, I want to have a description. I want to know how dank it is. I want to know if the air is moist. I want to know if I can smell goblin shit in the air. I want description. I want the stuff that my that I can't just look at. I want the rest of the experience as well. No battle map in the world's giving me that experience. They don't have the scratch and sniff battle maps as far as I know yet. So I think we're in a pretty Ooh. good place. Give yeah. time. I have an idea. Give me an idea. Um, <laughs> no. dollar idea. Run with it. Just <laughs> give me money for heroic when it succeeds. Um, but um, I think yes, but no. Um, it's very you know, easy to compare apples and oranges and say you don't win, but we're not talking about house shopping. We're not talking about 
taking a car for a test drive. We're not talking about squeezing the cantaloupes at the grocery store. We're talking about role-playing games. We're talking about interaction and immersion. By the way, they did add a scented candle for different scene of D&D. So you could have like them dungeon sent them Kendall and so I don't know if they're still they're still around but somebody did that. Okay, so who who's the one that made goblin armpit and who found a goblin to sniff the armpit to figure out what it smells like? I just the... I got you a scented candle for Christmas. Goblin turd. <laughs> Wasn't yeah. the actress that made scented, uh, scented candles of her own? Um... Yeah. No. Okay. Stop. Moving on. <laughs> We're gonna talk By the, the way. Answer. I'm fully aware that Connell is going to do the exact same thing he did last time he was on one of your streams. Let me and Mr. Max look like assholes while he sits there and pretends he's an angel while sending snarky private comments on Discord. Okay. Oh, I yeah. would not. So <laughs> the, I, I, that, I'm going to put this back up because uh, here, here's yeah. here's my issue with this oh, comment. Do you want me to give a take a quick take first? Yeah, go ahead. For me, like oh. the... Like, especially when you talk about like combat and stuff like that, for me, like, that's a feature, not a bug. Because when in the scrum of combat, you shouldn't have exact measurement, exact position. And for me, like, if somebody, and because, like, we know we have this rule that we do in the 40 thing, like, where the player don't ask a question to the GM. If you want to know something about the world, you have to interact with the world. Like, you know, you, you want to know if a door is locked in the real world, what you do, you go check if the door is locked, right? There's nobody to ask for. So it's the same thing. You're in combat. Oh, maybe you're, you've missed a bit of information. You don't know like how many guys are still standing. Your turn can be, I duck behind the barrel and I peek over. But how do I, I know if I'm in short or long range? You can, you, can take time to, range. you can take the time to, well, you can, take, you can take the time to aim and say that. I try to, uh, what about, you know? Or I try to find like a place where I can cover, like uh, to, you know, but those are those are all right terms. Just saying, like I duck behind the cover, and I peek over to count how many people are are still standing, and then the GM is going to give you the answer. No, and that's fine, and that's not only fine. That's interesting. That's dynamic. That's something that's different that happened in the turn than just like, oh, okay, uh, I'm going to move there and shoot this guy, right? I now you're him. in the midst of it, hmm? and I hit him. Yeah, <laughs> and I hit him. I uh... so for me, that's much more interesting. I one of the things I despise in a role playing game, and I will mock people who do this. I don't care if you've been playing for seventy years or you just started today. Absolutely despise this. Um, let me put my template down for my fireball, and it ends right here because I'm standing in this square, and you're in this square. This square takes full full force damage, but I'm literally one inch away of a three thousand degree fireball, but I take nothing. No. You don't know. You aim that fireball to the best that you can to hopefully you don't hit your friends. You're pretty close. Everybody make a saving throw. The people inside the fireball make a saving throw uh, for either full or half. Those who are on the edge, half or none because you're not sure. Or they back the hell up. Or you shout out and say, hey guys, I'm going to throw a fire. Whatever. There's so many things you can do, but I despise the down to the inch, I know exactly how far this works, and my lightning bolt will reflect and it will stop right here. No, you don't get that ever. Go ahead, Bear. Yeah, okay. So um, that's the one place where I will prefer a map. You guys are bunched up, fireball lands in the middle. We're not bunched up. Yeah, you are. You said you all went in there. We would have been smart. We would have spread out. Well, now but you I've weren't. In front of you, <laughs> right in front of me on the table, on the map. Look at you all standing within 10 feet of each other. Fireball. Each. Yeah, but for me, for me, for me, that's a player issue, right? Just like, yep. I, like, I don't want to play with people like that. You know, if, if you're gonna, make, yeah. if you're gonna make, a, if you're gonna make, a, like, you know, just it's fine for some table because like they're into that, but they're not fine for my table. Like, Et I don't want to. Moi, je, je pense que je suis snob quand je commence yep. à jouer avec mes règles, mais je, je vous raconte. Okay, this is an American un audience. Pico del English. What I said was, I said I used to think I was a snob <laughs> because of my restrictions for playing with people, and then I met Mr. Max, and now I know that you're <laughs> meaning role playing snob. Oh yeah, and I love no, him. I absolutely. I'm very, appreciate I'm very selective, right? But it's but not, and it's not, it's not, it's not about like, oh, you're not to my level. Or so. No, it's like we're not just a right fit for each other. That's fine. Like you're gonna find like other table. Like it's easy. You're gonna find any other table that's gonna be better suited for you. It's just going to work you. for us. I love you and I want to rope. We, we can you. still be friends. We can still no, be friends. We can. We can. It's just not in the, it just doesn't work in okay. that context. Yeah. Uh, before I read the super chat, uh, the unnatural vagueness actually matches the scrum and chaos of combat. What does so, vagueness mean? 
Look, I'm from Minnesota. We say vag. Deal with it. Do you have a bagel <laughs> with that? Do you also have a bagel? Tell me your vag. Yes. Bag, flag, bagel, whatever. I don't care. It's a Minnesota accent. You're going to deal with it. Uh, All right. <laughs> But but uh, it, it's it makes much 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 more sense than knowing anything the exactness of everything. I know gamers war gamers want that exactness. That is not how combat in any way shape or form ever ever works. So uh, crafty for twenty dollars says with theater of the mind you can abstract combat. The Princess Bride fight on the cliffs of insanity is a great example. That fight lasted three minutes, and the DM can narrate the flashes, faints, and flurries. Dis- uh, despise single, uh, huh? Oh, d- oh, despise single roll is single hit. Uh, the, uh, so in D and D, you know the one minute combat round. People are like, you know, one roll doesn't necessarily mean one hit. It means faints, jabs, uh, and so forth, and could be a couple strikes. I get it. I don't care either way. But it does explain the one-minute combat round, so I understand that. But thank you, Crafty. I appreciate that. So, any final commentary you guys have before we move on to actual combat? We've discussed half a segment, too, now. <laughs> I love everyone on this panel. Eh, I, could, I could take them or leave them. <laughs> oh, wait. Connell's here. Wait a minute. I love three-quarters of the people on this panel. I love one quarter. Oh, what did it do? Look into oh, yeah. my eye. <laughs> All right. Uh, I also love you, Porter. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoy this discussion, and and intentionally, these discussions are supposed to have people of differing thoughts. That's exactly what the the in, the point of this is. So if you're on here and you hate what I said but love what Connell said, that's what we want. If you love what Bear said but hate what Mr. Max said, again, that's what we want. Uh, so we want uh, the differing of opinion so you can make up your own mind and decide what is best for you at your table. So if you enjoyed the discussion, please like this video, subscribe to all of the panelists channel, except for Connell, because he didn't give me a channel, which you can find in the description.